Very good morning and uh, welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rumet Fawlts and you're welcome to today's edition of the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we're sure you're going to have a swell time with us because we have a lot packed for you today. Uh, by the way, you are the chef, so tell us what is on the menu today. Oh, okay. So first we'll be looking at some... Um, well, some topics first, and um, we have NRC yet to recover from government's previous transport fare slash, says MD, and Ribadu tells EFCC to block funding of terrorism, kidnapping, and banditry. So those are the two topics we'll be looking at. But before that, well, we'll have some teasers, as well as off the press, look at what the national dailies are saying this morning, and I'm sure you're going to have a sort of this morning. Yeah, well, I just said something about you being a chef, apart from the fact that we're going to have what you've just told us on the teasers, and then we're going to have our top trending issues. Um, what is on the menu also for Christmas? Oh, definitely. Real, real food. Definitely now. some chicken. I think Christmas is associated with chicken. How can you have Christmas and not have chicken? How can you have Christmas and not have rice? And that, that reminds me, chicken this year, uh, in some places they're selling it for as high as 15,000, some for 18,000. 20. Even 20,000. Right. Wow. That it's, it's serious. It's a back very serious. Back of rice is about 100 and something right now. So we're going back to the days where we could only eat rice on Christmas Day and New Apparently. Year Day. <laughs> you know, because when we were growing up, rice was the thing. That's why I think it just uh, stuck to Christmas because that was the one time that we got to eat rice as we right. wanted it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you had to be very um, rich, a very rich family or very so well-to-do family. To afford rice every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Not every Not even, even every, every day. day. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Every Sunday you have rice and all that. But so it's like we're going back to that time. And I, I don't know whether the government is doing anything uh, really. In well, they do something. They, they slash the bus prices and give you free train Please, rides. Don't, don't remind <laughs> me of that. That is so, something. The government is doing something. By the way, today we're going to be discussing the fact that they have done something like this before. And NRC, which is the Nigerian Railway Corporation, is yet to recover from, from the losses, mm -hmm. let me put it that way, that of that time mm -hmm. till now. So how are they running their establishment? I'm just wondering if they just want to make this, the, the Railway Corporation to die again as it died at some point. I don't know. But we'll you know, we, asked, we actually asked this question mm -hmm. um, and we were like, you know, where is the money coming from? Because at the end of the day, we're saying you're taking out... Um, the bus fares or 50 percent of the bus fares and um no money to be paid for the train rides mm -hmm. obviously it is a business you should pay the business yeah so even if it's run by you but yes, you should pay you should it. still pay the business so for instance the railway corporation should be paid you you pay for the nigerians that are going to go on that mm -hmm. train ride and saying oh you know what you don't have to pay but we will pay for you mm -hmm. but not that you're telling them to do it for free they're running on whatever fuel that they, they need mm -hmm. to use the staff needs to be paid and there's nothing for them. So how are they supposed to recover? So I'm sure that's what must have happened the first time. And that's the reason why it took a while for them to recover. And but it happens in uh, a lot of government establishments. People, politicians, everybody just comes. Uh, they just come and say, okay, do this for us. And then they don't get to pay just because the government at uh, mm. some point gives them some sub subventions and all that. But it shouldn't work that way. If you go to media houses, for instance, state-run media houses, most times press releases that come from all the ministries, they get to be read for free. Nobody even thinks about it. Every once in a while, maybe they just drop something. Mm. Uh, they tell you we have retainership and all that. And, and it's not true. Money doesn't come in as it should come in. Yeah. And if the money from the government uh, agencies and parastatals come to the media house, I'm using media house now, as it should come, it can run even on its own without the, the yes. money that comes from it the government. It should be a profitable business. You should be able to run the business without any other thing, mm -hmm. without you know funding from the government. At least when the government comes and pays for the, the, the services, mm -hmm. when private enterprises come and pay for services, you're running a good business. It's yeah. just profitable. But here what they do is, okay, they come to you, you run it for free, they go to a private firm, pay more than double of the money they sh should have paid you, mm -hmm. and then have it also aired in the other place. So, do you know what I call that? See finish. See finishism. <laughs> oh, see finishism. Yes, okay. it is see finishism. <laughs> I like the word see finishism. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I thought I could uh, go to all the places that... Um, uh, that we have bus uh, terminals to mm -hmm. find out what was really going on, but I could not. I'm mm -hmm. sure 
I will try to go there today so that by Monday we should have a definite uh, report of what is really happening. So if far, people all the people enjoying this or if, not? all the people have called and tried to find out whether they enjoyed this bus ride because they traveled. I've said no, they didn't see anything like that. But I'm not saying it's not happening. So uh, we needed to have known these uh, transport companies that were contracted to do this because mm. it can't be anywhere, just it's a, so everyone. Vague, no information mm -hmm. So they whatsoever. should tell us so that we know that, okay, if this XYZ is supposed to do this and they're not doing it, we can shout and say, okay, they are not doing it. Yes. So government, do not pay them. But now we don't know. So anybody can just do what he wants and oh. then take stumps of receipt to the Minister of Finance or Humanitarian I Affairs. I want Nigeria to surprise me one I don't day. Know. Uh, they will surprise you <laughs> positively but or negatively. But they keep surprising yeah. me still. <laughs> yeah, they keep surprising you negatively. So <laughs> you have to be definite and say, I want them to surprise me positively. Uh, well, that would let's be the move day. over to some tro top trending stories this morning. We have federal government reopens third million bridge after repairs. The federal government has reopened the third million bridge one month after its closure for maintenance work says the, Le the Lagos State Commissioner for Transportation, Uluwashim Oshiemi, he commended Nigerians for their patience during the temporary closure, adding that the government understood the inconvenience the closure may have caused. Oshiemi maintained that the reopening affirms the government's commitment to infrastructure upkeep and public safety. The move came over one month after the federal government, through the Ministry of Works, announced that it will be closing two ramps of the third mainland bridge for repairs. The November 1 move was announced by the Federal Controller of Works in Lagos. Engineer Mrs. O.I. Kisha noted that the repairs works, the repair works will begin with the ramps connecting Aurora Shuki to Adekunle and Lagos Island, Adeniji Adili to Adekunle simultaneously. Following the maintenance work, motorists were advised to cooperate with the traffic management officials by obeying and observing all diversions and also using alternative routes. The third mainland is, the, is Africa's second longest bridge, extending nearly 12 kilometers, about 7.5 miles, to link Lagos Island, the business heart of the city, with the mainland where most people live. It was built in 1990 in Nigeria's economic engine. One, it was built in 1990 by the Babangida administration, which is not civilian and it is not democracy. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just being mischievous this morning. <laughs> but secondly is that uh, when you see people trekking on the third mainland bridge, you just know that they are ready to go the 12 kilometers or 11 point something kilometers mm. just to get to where they can find food to eat or mm. do the work that will put food on their table and it just worries me. But I don't know if uh, the repair works on the axis from uh, Yanoworo to Adeniji or Ad, uh, whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, if it was done in the midnight, because I use that route every time and I've never seen people working on it. I see them working on the sides, they side going to a butameta and the Yeah, ones the who, ramps. Yeah, those places. But the main, I would call it the main bridge that mm -hmm. comes from Yanoworo to the other, I didn't see them work yeah. on them, ex except the time when they filled the potholes on the, yes. on the road. That was However, way they're before. still, they're still a lot of potholes there's still a lot of potholes because yeah. i applied that road last night there's still some potholes there so yeah. i think they just did a partial work they yeah. need to do the full thing yeah but at least it it was a it is a lot better than it used to be oh when yes you definitely enter the third mainland bridge and you'll be afraid that you your tire might go bad mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. on your car but if well let, let's just assume that um it was those places that they yeah, worked the on ramps. that needed to be worked on. The main, main bridge, as I call it, uh, did not have the need for all those ones. But kudos to um, the government, because maintenance culture is a problem in Nigeria. Yes. So if they can, every once in a while, think about what to do uh, for a bridge like that, and maybe any other thing, maybe they should, uh, we should applaud them. But oh, yeah, let me use this time also to call on the um, Lagos State Government. Uh, I don't know if that's their responsibility or it's a major federal road. Uh, there's this um, pedestrian walkway at um, uh, Alakwere okay. Estate. You know, it, there was an accident uh, a few weeks ago and a, a truck, mm. these articulated trucks, hit it and the thing broke. So wow. which means people can't cross the road through using that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's only on one side that... That thing is so they should 
moving. They yeah, they should, they should work on it so that people can get to cross the mm -hmm. road. It's dangerous crossing the road. So if they are so used to crossing the road using the bridge and mm -hmm. now there's been an accident, they can't wait for the person who spoiled it, who, who mm -hmm. broke it, because it might take him time to raise this money. So yeah. they should do it and wait for the time that person can pay if that's what they're waiting for. So at Lagos State Government, please, you've been doing well, so just work on that pedestrian bridge because we even need more in Lagos so that people don't get to cross the road and uh, face the, uh, the possible accidents that uh, can yeah. occur if they cross the road. Okay, well, up to, we're going to another story, and I'm sure this one would gladden some people's hearts. Um, Portacot Refinery begins operation. Yay, finally. Let us see the fuel. <laughs> Let's see the fuel come. The federal government on Thursday confirmed the commencement of operations at the Portacot Refinery and Petrochemical Company in River State. It announced that the facility commenced operations on December 20, 2023, as the first phase of work at the plant had been completed, adding that refined petroleum products would start flowing from the refinery after the Christmas break. The government had earlier in the year repeated, repeatedly stated that the Port Harcourt refinery would begin operations before the end of 2023. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Senator Heineken Lupoburi, who led members of the refinery steering committee to inspect the facility, congratulated the Nigerian National Petroleum Com Company Limited and Nigerians in general for the feat. Nigeria's refineries in Port Harcourt, Kaduna, and Wari have been dormant for decades as the federal government has spent several billions of naira to revamp the facilities. The group chief executive officer, NMPCL, Melekiari, said the employees of the company worked day and night for over 9.6 million man hours to get the refinery back on stream. On April 7, 2021, um, it has been reported that the NMPC officially signed a contract with Till Moint SPA for the $1.5 billion, billion dollar actually, rehabilitation program of the Port Harcourt Refining Company. I mean, this is great news because we're hoping that fuel will be coming out. And so the kind, the amount that we pay for fuel right now would, you know, just calm down a little bit. I like bit. the fact that you use the word hoping. <laughs> <laughs> we are hoping. I mean, I bought fuel for 620 <laughs> yesterday. My body is biting me. <laughs> okay, well. And I was in traffic for over five hours. Mm. And I spent most of that fuel mm. for 620. But if it was three something, eh, at least it's still not as good as 100 and something now. But it, it's, there's something off it. I'm just wondering when when fuel moved from was it 89 naira to or 80 to 89 naira something but that was less than 100 good luck naira yes and everybody went and occupied occupying Abuja. Nigeria and now it's it's 600 700 in some places a thousand wow. in some places in Nigeria nobody is occupying even even the 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 smallest road <laughs> in Nigeria we are so comfortable they do strong. I, it's it's is strong. It's is strong. Because I remember occupying Nigeria. Um, I think I was still in uni then, and I couldn't even fly out of Nigeria. Like the the airports mm -hmm. were closed everywhere. Gas stations, roads. That everywhere. was a ten naira race. Yes. From what it was to whatever they, they were saying they were going to do it, and they occupied Nigeria. Those same people are in power now. Funny enough, so. Um, I used to produce Plus Politics, which is later in the evening. If you've never watched Plus Politics, you can join. Um, and one of the guests had said he was, you know, marching forward during Occupy Nigeria, but that he did not know better then. Now he knows better. Now he knows that subsidy has to be gone. So as at that time when there was just that, you know, few naira race, he felt, no, we can't do this. Occupy Nigeria, make sure that this money comes, you know, back down to the amount we've been paying. But look at us, we're at 620, and you're saying you did not know better then. So now it's okay he's for us. He's obviously in government now. He, of course he's, he's in government. He's in government now. We of know better. Nigerians need to suffer. That's, that's the, mm -hmm. the light bulb moment that you, that you yeah. had. They it, tell you you have, to, you have to suffer. It's just like, you know how in the Bible they say um, seven years of farming mm -hmm. and then seven years of plenty. So mm -hmm. right now we're going through the seven years of farming. And I, I hope we will still see the seven years of plenty. <laughs> Maybe it's not my generations to come. That uh, please, it that. has to be in my time mm -hmm. so that I can I can tell stories to my children and grandchildren that this How is Nigeria, what it used to be yeah. and this is what it is now. So keep hope alive. Yeah. Uh, but you know, 
Portacot refinery coming, I, I wish they had definitely told us that uh, because of this, the f f uh, price of fuel will come down. They are yeah. hush-hush about that, which means there's possibility there will be a lot of fuel, but the price might still be the it's same thing. Right. And if that is the case, then there is no uh, progress that we have made because we want that progress to be such that the Nigerian people will start buying fuel for less than 500 naira right. at least. Because if it goes back to even 400 naira, people will clap mm -hmm. and say it has. We have tried. Yes. Because what you used to take to the filling station to buy five liters of fuel just a few months ago is just one liter less now. Less than a oh, liter. So, so what are we saying? And I wish, I wish they could have explored the technology that i'm just saying i say a novice someone who doesn't know anything mm -hmm. uh they could have explored the te technology uh used by bowfire that's what they yeah. call it in the in port and all that I i'm saying this because in rice production for instance there are rice meals that will 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 meal the rice they will remove the husk from the rice and all that but it doesn't have the ability to remove the stones that's why sometimes mm. you have this local rice having stones. Yes. But there are also other machines whose only job is to destone, Ooh. remove all the stones. So you can produce it from this small meal that can do it without removing the stones and just take it to the one that will clean it for you and remove all the stones. So local rice now is safer than it used to be. Yes. So if they could have explored the technology of coal fire and collecting this and cleaning it, I'm just saying yeah. randomly and cleaning it in the Port Harcourt refinery. I think it will be faster. Mm. I think there will be more fuel and then it will be cheaper because yeah. the a technology better system is of, yes. a better process. So, yeah. yeah. So sometimes w in my village, we have uh, the meal that was uh, one at one point, the biggest meal in rice meal in, um, in Africa. Now mm. it's not the, the biggest, I'm sure, but it used to be the biggest meal in the 80s and early 90s. Now, if you can mill your rice somewhere else, you can take it there for cleaning. Mm. You know, it polishes it and removes the stones for you, and you take it home. If you go to a bakliki, it also happens that they have a lot of mills. There's, in fact, a community of rice mills that can do this without cleaning it, and then you take it to where it will clean. Yeah. So if they could explore... It's just the, like division of labor. Yes, they could explore the technology, which is cheap enough, and then see how they can take it from there and say, okay, since this is, this may not be as clean as it is, which I don't know anyway, because yeah. people have been using it and they're not complaining. If it's not as clean as it should be, pass it through this and then we'll clean it for you and all that. Yeah. And if, 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 if they're even bothered about, you know, it being illegal or something, grant these people licenses. Grant them licenses to be able Whatever, to operate. Even you, even you do it if you, if you because that technology is cheaper it must be cheaper right for it. people to be able to do it in their homes it must be cheaper. It so explore that and see how you can develop that there are people who have read courses that can do things like that yes so commission them let them see how they can improve it so that we'll have these cottage mills let, let's say or cottage refineries mm -hmm. if that's how we'll call it a, a lot littered everywhere and we can get our own crude oil and refine so some of these people who do not even want to sell in Nigeria, that want to smuggle it and all that, they will have a legal business. We buy crude from Nigeria, we, we refine it, and our own is to refine and sell to other countries. Right. It's legal business. But, you know, I'm not saying like an expert. The, the <laughs> politicians must be the expert. Well, if you are an expert, please advise us. I think that we should get someone to advise us on, you know, how to go about it. Will they advise us? Well, <laughs> we advise the, the government. Advise the government on how to go about it, and hopefully, I mean, fuel can just reduce in price more. Mm? Mm -hmm. Please, it would help us. Okay, let's move over to our last stop trending, and this one, Governor Biodo laments rise in cultism cases. The Ogun State Governor, Dakbo Abiodo, has expressed concern over the surge in cultism and the attendant bloodletting in the state, urging the Department of State Services, DSS, to devise measures to fight the criminal act to a standstill. Abiodun highlighted that the prevalence of court activities, which was never a major issue in the past, is now becoming a huge source of concern and quite worrisome to the residents of the state. The governor disclosed this on Thursday at the Southwest Zonal Conference of State Directors of Security held at um, somewhere in Abelkota, the state capital, 
while addressing the audience of security operatives, a Biodon expressed worry that even school children and artisans were also involved in cultism. Abiodun said that an urgent need for the men of the department to understand the motives behind such involvement, the reasons for the escalating violence and killings among cult members, and the incentives that attract individuals to join the groups in the state. The governor equally urged the DSS to investigate the root causes behind worrying, this worrying trend. Speaking at the program, the director of DSS Ogun State Command, Commander Folashade Adekayoja, assured the governor of a safe and more secure Ogun state. Adekayoja assured that the department would continue to work in synergy with other security agencies to effectively combat insecurity in the state. The DSS boss, who expressed displeasure at the, that the Southwest Zone has been marked with kidnappings along highways, pledged that the security agency will combat the menace with experience and expertise gathered from his relationship with other sister agencies. Um, so I've, I've heard of, you know, kids even joining court, kids in, in secondary school. From secondary school, they start. They're joining, they started with cliques. They say, oh, you know, we just have, we're just a clique of friends. And then they move over to universities and they join cults. But now we're even seeing that the cult is moving into secondary school. And from this statement that we've read, even artisans, um, people in the <coughs> state, joining yeah. these cults. They're asking what the incentive is. First of all, a cult is a gathering of people with like minds. They have the same ideologies and all that. It doesn't have to be a, a bad thing. Even a church can be described as a cult mm. in some way, in a positive way, because they're not gathering to kill people and all that. The incentive... Um, why cultism entered into Nigeria in the first place is to fight inequalities. That's why Shoyinka brought it. He's the father of cultism in Nigeria. And I'm not sure what is happening now, what's his intention. Yeah. Because they had to fight for good grades, they had mm -hmm. to fight for their rights in the school and all that. So he came up with that. That is understandable. But right now, if you're asking of the incentive, I'm sure they know already what the incentives are. Um, a lot of people in the political sphere are people who have been or are still members Part of, of cults. Yes. So there is no cult in Nigeria that doesn't have a very highly placed politician right now in mm -hmm. our country. Mm -hmm. but you can quote me anywhere. It, whether you think it's very local, whether you think it's sophisticated or not, they must have one person at least that is high up there. Mm. So if you can find a governor, because we've seen cases where some governors fly the colors. That's what mm -hmm. you're saying. Yes, they yes. fly the colors of some particular cause. Red, blue, And you see yellow. that the people that have been given appointments are in some way related to these calls and all that. Right. Then what other incentive are you looking for? Yeah. And if the DSS does what they do, and I'm sure they do, I'm sure they have a lot of names of people who are highly placed yes. that are already cultists. Just yeah. like they have the names of the people who are sponsoring Boko Haram mm -hmm. and nobody has ever been arrested. So they should stop asking us what the incentives <laughs> are. So, so, so I think this is what it is, right? Most of these people, they'll tell you they're in a confraternity. Oh, you know what? We're just, we're just friends, group of friends gathering together, mm -hmm. moving for... Um, and. Uh, the same ideologies, right? Mm. That's how they would they would say it to you. But guess what? The little ones who are joining this court most times are being used as puppets. They're the, they're being they're used the to men. carry out the, yeah, the, to they're... carry out their activities. Yes. So the, the the bad activities that these politicians would naturally not put their hands into, they will send these other ones to go do it. So that's the reason why they keep recruiting these people. Mm. And those are the incentives. When you're talking about incentives, obviously, if I have someone who's a you know highly placed politician backing me up even when I do something bad if I'm if I'm arrested this person will come and you know bail me out if I need money I can get money from this person um, you know just that power that you know that is backing you obviously those are the incentives that these people would have to join this cult I give you two 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 short stories I, I was teaching in one school in Aquaibon State in Okoma back uh, a, a Christian secondary school that's how it is Nigerian Christian se secondary school and in SS1, a lot of them were 14, mm. 15, the oldest was 16. Guess what? There was a very huge problem of cultism in that school. And my students of 14, 15 were, we're part, part of it. Wow. This is like uh, how many years ago in a very early 90s, I think 1990, 19, 
oh well, not not early 90s late 90s okay. 99 2000 yeah. uh, there were 14 years some of them were bearing gospel names. <laughs> In fact, one of them was actually called gospel. Wow. And that. It was a big problem. So the principal had to come out, call all the children out. Some of them were in jazz as three. And they were already joining? They were kids. already in a cult. In fact, there were so many bad things such that at some point I was teaching them a, 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 something on literature and I asked them a question that they were supposed to ask me. It is because of love. Uh, they were supposed to answer that and they were telling me because someone was if you re you've read the lion and the jewel mm. there was someone who was so so obsessed with the girl and uh, even when the girl rejected him he didn't want to leave and i asked what was the reason i was expecting them to say uh, love. love and they were saying uh sir it maybe it's kubnomi you know what kubnomi is no it's a love portion <laughs> wow. you know, like 14 years i'm gonna be quiet for further the way they were telling me, they were mentioning names. You did it that time. Hey, hey I, I know, but you did it wow. too. And I was just looking at them like, I was sweating when, even when it was summertime. My goodness. But that's one, by the way. Uh, the second thing is that when I started out as a broadcaster early in Cross River State, there was a community that was so plagued with this cultism. And they knew the people that were doing this. They were killing people. So the community heads, about 15 of them came together, went to the police, and they identified these people. You're kidding me. Wow. Anyway, let me finish my story. Okay. They identified these people, got them arrested. Okay, they, gave, they brought a list with the approval of the police. Yeah. They brought a list to us to announce because these people were wanted. They were running away from the community and all that. The police declared them wanted. They brought the list to us. 